knocked out the joints though thing. Earliest memory I would say I remember I was staying with my gran and my gran always used to say to me and my brother, I'm gonna get you into boxing. And then your obvious things like Rocky, Mike Tyson fights or something like that my father and that would always be talking about. And that's what kind of, I think I must have planted the seed. My first boxing match came round about by accident. It was a charity thing. I was never allowed to box. Like if you had to put a number on it, I'm about, and you probably pick up on your cameras, but about three quarters blind in my right eye. So if I ever went to box amateur, I would fail medical immediately. I went in the whole, my whole kind of life wanting to box, and that's why I was always coming in and coming out of boxing. So you'd go in and you would spar with some folk. Like you spar with a guy, like got the better of me, actually left the ring in a huff because I got the better of him. And then two weeks later, he went and won a title. I think I was, must have been about 21 or something like that. Because I was always kind of, I could never take it seriously. So it was always heartbreaking for me, the fact that I was never allowed to box because of, because of my eye. I must have been about 23, 24 when I had my first fight. I thought I was going to have to die and be reincarnated to be able to live a life to box again. So when I got a phone call saying, listen, we're going to do a charity thing, you want to fight on it, it took me about 0.3 seconds to be like, aye, obviously. Even although you know better, like you've always got the, the rocky mindset. So you would train like an absolute idiot. Like you would just train basically till you couldn't train anymore. So you would always be out running and you'd be going to boxing and you'd be sparring. It was non-stop. But this one where, because I'm a qualified personal trainer, and that was a massive element. And another reason why I wanted to do it again is because of you know, my years of experience you know, that what I'd gathered and been taking other folk through and getting massive success. I wanted to apply that to myself. A lot of people always saying like, why did you get up? I never gave up. I would never give up. I'd still be fighting right now. I'd probably have about 100 fights if I was allowed. But because of the nature of the injury and stuff, we were always mental cautious. The reason why I had to give up in the past is because my good eye got injured. We were outside and we were doing a wee bit of spam and the Velcro on the boy's glove scuffed my eye. Uh, when I went to hospital, it was called a corneal abrasion, but it was so near my pupil. It was like, they said if that was like another couple of millimetres over that side, you would probably have been blinded. But I was sparring with one of my mates, and um, we were just having a wee carry on, and uh, I threw a left hook and I snapped my bicep tendon. Uh, and I mean a clean snap. And uh, I had to go and get that surgically reattached and stuff. <laughs> so coming back into the last fight, because I tried to make an earlier comeback and I couldn't, it was just too sore. And then it was just a case of through this whole training camp coming into this fight of trying to learn how to manage it. Like I knew I couldn't punch really hard two times a week, but I could do it once. It was a massive disadvantage, so you <laughs> fight me one eye and one arm. <laughs> when I when I stopped boxing, um I was with some like in a different relationship at the time and I had a few really good clients and my focus went totally on the clients. And we, a lot of them competed in like bodybuilding and stuff. We had somebody went, went on to win the world championships. So my focus went on them. And then I'd done a whole operation, get fat to get shredded. But I'd done that myself to give myself a long-term goal to distract myself. So I got myself extremely overweight and then lost it all again and done a bodybuilding show. But when that was all passed away, I couldn't create another goal for myself. I went into a bit of a deep depression after that, like really bad. It was a lack of a personal goal or anything that actually really mattered. When I was boxing, nothing else mattered, if I want to put it that way. Um, which isn't always a good thing, because I'm a very all or nothing guy. Through that whole time, I was already thinking, right, when this is passed, like I was already making plans of what I'm going to do afterwards. And that's what I learned through going through it all again, is that like me as a person, I'm going to have to have big goals that actually mean something. Set yourself a goal that actually means something and then commit to it. Alright guys, welcome to another video. So I'm not actually long back The in. vlog thing actually started when I snapped my I kind of want to do it a bit more in an educational sense and I hate the fact that most people on social media are always putting their best face forward and I was always wanting to put it a close to where like open up about mental health and like talking about stuff and showing that it's actually hard that I didn't just wake up with abs one day or anything like that, do you know what I mean? It was showing them like that was an absolute slog of nine months. The fight was amazing in the sense of like the support. I 
I, I wrote it at the end of the vlog, and I, I done a wee bit at the end, and it's like you're gone, gone for the point where you didn't want to live anymore to having what I would probably class as the best night of your life. And a lot of people might see, feel like that sounds extreme, um, but that's genuinely what it went for. Like it really, really did go for one, that one extreme to another. Now, team tight health and fitness main business, personal training, um, online coaching, do uh, do classes and all those kind of things, and. My job is simply to educate the person so they don't need me. <laughs> Would I ever turn to the ring? Um, somebody asked me the other day and I was like, no, 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 no. And then somebody else went and said to me, but what if somebody called you and started trash talking you? I have always try and learn to never say never, but no, I, 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 the answer would be no. I was trash talking.